Have you guys ever thought how much pleasure an old crone can really give? Hi guys, it's Numi and I'm back with you and uh, forgive me, uh, I made a little bit of a mistake in the intro. I didn't really mean an old crone, I meant an old coin. Yeah, an old coin. Have you thought how much more pleasure an old coin can give compared to a younger, less mature coin? A coin that has seen less of the world, travelled interesting places. And uh, I'd like to show you some coins that arrived, which really made me think about that. And, you know, I'd like to see what you guys think. You know, whether you could be persuaded to go back in history a little bit and revisit some older coins and give up some of your younger, fresher coins. So the first coin we're looking at now is an 1820 sovereign. This one is actually quite a nice one because a lot of these 1820 sovereigns are ground into the dust with all the detail that has disappeared from them in circulation. And this one has still got quite a bit of detail left. It's uh, probably around about, well, anything between AU50 and AU55, uh, probably about a 55 by the looks of it. Um, we'll see what it comes back. A, uh, an 1820, even in this condition, is still round about a $1,500 coin. The next one we've got here is uh, flashing forward just a very few years to 1835. And this one is another sovereign that you really don't see very many of. This is uh, William IV. Um, so this was just before... Queen Victoria came onto the throne. It's got a really nice decorative shield at the back. And uh, a lot of these are so worn down. Actually, this one is, I mean, it's obviously worn. It's a circulation coin. This is from when sovereigns were really used and circulated. And you can see the wear on the harp uh, pretty worn down, even though some of the others, maybe some of the other areas of the shield aren't quite as worn. Um, 1835 coin, still very nice. Um, I wish I had this in my collection. Uh, it's still an expensive coin, again, even though it shows some signs of wear on the hair, flat spots on the, on the hair and stuff like that. You know, I think it's still a really nice coin. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, I think, you're seeing a few more of these around, or maybe I'm just noticing them, that, um, you know, people are trying to build typesets you know, they, they're, they're a little bit bored of the same uh, older sovereigns with the King's Heads and Victoria, you know, and they're just trying to get one or two for their typesets that go back a little bit before then to uh, right back to 1817 when the modern sovereign started. So those two came from one Silver Forum member and, uh, you know, he's been trying to buy the best that he can find which are still relatively affordable. Because as soon as you go up a few grades from there, you actually get into some pretty heady territory, which is, you know, for a lot of people, fundamentally unaffordable. I mean, we're talking, you know, to get a mint state 1820, it can be anything between um, three and a half and five thousand dollars, something like that. So uh, you don't very often see these coins in really good condition. You see them in the heritage auctions, you know, you see them exchanging hands at very high prices with collectors, but I haven't seen very many that have come for grading. And so when these ones arrived, um, pretty much in the same mail as the ones you've just seen, it was just a great opportunity to put them together, focus a little bit on older coins, and try and give you guys a nice side-by-side -side comparison. And um, yeah, it's not something that I've been able to do very often, so I thought it'd be quite fun to do it. Uh, but So before I do that, there's this first coin which I want to show you, which is equally as interesting. Really, really nice coin. Let's have a look at that one. This coin is Britain's first decimal coin. 
And even though decimalization came in in 1969, and this coin is 1849, it was, it was basically the first florin. And a florin is one-tenth of a pound, two shillings, one-tenth of a pound. So that was uh, an interesting thing about it, but not the most interesting thing about it. Um, this one is known as the godless florin because um, it didn't have the words, uh, the Latin words de gratia, didn't have a reference to God. And it was actually then only pretty short-lived. In 1851, it was replaced with the Gothic design florin. So this one is in, it's very highly desirable. Uh, hopefully this one will grade uh, MS 61, 62, something like that. Um, it's a really, really nice coin. And it's a coin I particularly like because it has a story uh, with it. So it's got the story of the first decimal coin and the story of being the godless florin where they uh, omitted the reference to God. So that was the first coin. And then the other two coins are, in a way, um, even nicer and more distinctive than that beautiful 1849 godless florin. So uh, let's have a look at those as well. So remember the, um, the early modern sovereign, the 1820, that you just saw at the beginning of this video. And just imagine my surprise when I opened this in the office and took a look and uh, I had to do a second take because I didn't quite believe what I was seeing because this is an 1817 which is the first year of the modern sovereign and it is just in beautiful condition it's just really really nice tons of detail all over it tons of mint luster no it's a, obviously a mint state coin I don't know what it'll get maybe there are some little bits of wear on it in some places the fields are nice and uh, free of any scratches and kind of nasty things maybe one or two you can see here just on the right by the horse's leg there's a tiny little mark on the field no so it might but it might get i hope it gets at least 61 i think that'll be something it it, uh, it deserves but a 61 in this 1817 we're talking about what uh, a four thousand dollar coin three four thousand dollar coin maybe more on a good day um this is a really really valuable and very beautiful coin and uh a, uh, a great one to have and it'll be great uh, at the end of this video you'll see a comparison between the 1820 and that 1817 so you can see the difference um, that it makes between a kind of low AU and a mint state one of those. I remember sitting in the office and opening these packets and thinking well you know what on earth is this one going to be and can it stay at the same level get better, get worse, what's going to be in this one? And just look what was in this last one. This is an 1817, half a sovereign. Uh, it's the first time I've actually held one of these and seen one, seen pictures of them. Um, there are quite a few of these around in bad condition, very few in really good condition. Uh, this one looks to be really good. There are there is a little bit of a few signs of wear, um, you know. On a bad day, I guess this will get fifty eight, but it might very well with NGC get sixty one as well. Depends on how the graders feel about it. But they are two really really great coins. Um, match dates eighteen seventeen, full sovereign with mint luster, uh, the half sovereign um, with great detail still there really really nice i mean anybody would love to have these two coins in their collection and it doesn't surprise me at all that these are being graded and i hope that they get the kind of grades that they deserve when they get um, processed at ngc um, be interested to see what happens i thought i'd uh, take a look at some of the the pictures uh, because sometimes you know, video only shows so much and you can also get a really good idea what these coins are like when you take a look at the, uh, the still photos as well. So here's some photos of the half sovereign. And you can see when you look at this, you know, there is signs of wear. It's not really 
mint state, but there's still a lot of, lot of detail. So that might very well start to get more 58 uh, than MS. But uh, looking at these coins side by side, you can see all the extra detail that's there on the, uh, the one which is a high grade specimen. But the other one is also pretty good and uh, I think should do pretty well at NGC as well. But this one I'm particularly, I particularly uh, like. So what's your verdict, guys? Would you uh, give up some of your modern coins and date an old crone? Uh, an old coin? Would you date one of those? Would you add some older stuff to your collection? Or are you just still totally seduced by the beauty of the moment, um, the modern coin? Let me know what you think.